morning. Uh, this is the first time I'm uh, in the Buddhist library. And, uh, I seldom come to Singapore to give talks. Uh, today the topic is uh, the Noble Eightfold Path. And uh, this is the most important part uh, of the Buddha's teachings. <coughs> Sometimes uh, certain books say uh, there are 84,000 Dharma doors. Uh, as far as uh, liberation is concerned, uh, there's only one Dharma door, that is the Noble Eightfold Path. So, this Noble Eightfold Path uh, consists of eight factors. In Chinese, we translate it as Pa Chung Tao. But actually, the Pali is Arya Atangi Kamaga. So, if you translate it properly, Arya uh, is Sengren, Atangika Maga is Pa Chir Tao, like the Chung Chir Pu, the Chir, it factored path. So, the first uh, factor is right view. Two days ago, I gave a talk on right view. And uh, so, I won't talk so much about right view today because there's not so much time, but uh, I'll summarize. Now, what is right view? Right view, there are two types of right view in the Buddha's teachings. One is worldly right view, one is Arin right view. Worldly right view is basically Understanding Kama Vipaka. Kama Vipaka is intentional action uh, and its result. Sometimes people translate it as uh, cause and effect, but that's not a good translation because cause, uh, there is worldly cause and Kama. Kama is intentional action, so there must be intention. Uh, behind your action, and only is it karma. So, for example, if you are driving on the road, and a small boy runs across the road, and you hit and kill the boy, because there is no intention on your part, so there is no karma, but there is cause and effect. As a result of killing that boy, you might be attacked by some people and you might get called up to court sued and all that. So there is cause and effect but there's no karma vipaka. So when we do something intentionally uh, it can be through uh, the three doors of our body, speech and mind and whenever you do something intentionally you have to bear the consequences and vipaka is the consequence. So kama vipaka means uh, uh, the intentional action and the consequence of it. So to understand this and to believe that there is such a thing as uh, having to pay for our kama. So if you do skillful karma by benefiting others, uh, you will be happy as a result. But if you harm others, uh, uh, create evil karma, and you have to suffer for it. Uh, then, worldly right view also means uh, uh, understanding that there are planes of evil, not that after you pass away, there's nothing. So, if you understand there are planes of rebirth uh, that await you, happy destination as well as woeful destinations of rebirth, uh, then you are careful uh, that the karma you create uh, is skillful karma, not unskillful karma, so that you are reborn in a happy destination of rebirth. Uh. And then thirdly, you believe uh, that there are holy men uh, who practice the holy, holy path uh, and attain various stages of Arya Hodna. So basically, there is worldly karma, yeah. come, uh, right view. 
And our in right view is defined as understanding the Four Noble Truths, understanding that life is suffering, dukkha, or unsatisfactory. Uh, this uh, word dukkha um, can be said to be suffering, but the uh, problem is uh, a lot of us uh, find it hard to accept uh, that life is suffering because we have a good life. But the Buddha, he has the uh, divine eye, so he can see uh, that uh, there are woeful planes of rebirth. Uh, and because there are woeful planes of rebirth, uh, uh, he said that life is really sorrowful. Uh, if you were to ask a wealthy person who's living a good life, uh, and, or if you were to tell him that life is suffering, uh, he, he cannot accept it uh, because he does not see that life is suffering. On the other hand, if you were to ask somebody, for example, in Africa, or in India, or Indonesia, some poor person, and then uh, he will tell you that life is suffering. So, the Buddha said there are five planes of rebirth, uh, two happy destinations of rebirth, and three woeful destinations of rebirth. The two happy destinations of rebirth are, are the human plane and the heavens, uh, and the three woeful planes are the ghost realm, the animal realm and the hell realm. So, even in our human plane, which is supposed to be a happy destination of rebirth, we can see that life is not really that happy. There are many things you want in the world you cannot get. And even when you get the things that you want, you don't seem to be satisfied. You are satisfied for a short while, and later you pray for this and you pray for that. And uh, sometimes uh, those that you love uh, are separated from you. And sometimes those, those that you dislike uh, will always come near you uh, to give you suffering. And uh, the Buddha said, uh, in short, uh, our body and our mind Five aggregates of attachment uh, give us suffering. The body you can see uh, year by year we grow old uh, and uh, we become sick, and then uh, the greatest suffering uh, is when death comes. And the um, cause of suffering, uh, the Buddha said, uh, is uh, craving. When we are happy with something, we want to cling to it, we want it to change. But the greatest characteristic of the world is impermanence, anicca. There's nothing that ever stands still, everything is in a flux, changing all the time. So, uh, whatever gives us pleasant feeling, we want it again and again. And because we cannot get it uh, permanently, uh, uh, we suffer. And then uh, the, the third noble truth uh, is that there is a state of cessation of suffering called Nibbana, where the three poisons, uh, greed, hatred and delusion, are eliminated. And... Uh, for noble truth uh, is that there is a path uh, to the ending of uh, dukkha, which is a noble eightfold path. Uh, so, if you understand the basic the, the basics uh, of the four noble truths, uh, then you have the Aryan right view. And when you have the Aryan right view, uh, it also encompasses the worldly right view, uh, Lokya Samaditi. Arin right view is Lokuttara Samaditi. Now, why is right view important? Firstly, you have a worldly right view because you understand the working of Kama Vipaka 
and you understand that there are woeful planes of rebirth, huh? you will be careful that the karma you create is skillful karma, so that your next rebirth huh, is into a happy destination of rebirth, huh? not a woeful destination of rebirth. Huh? But worldly right view huh, doesn't guarantee huh, that you will always get a happy destination of rebirth. Huh? This lifetime you have a worldly right view, the next life uh, you have a happy destination of rebirth. But after that you've forgotten all the Dharma you learned and uh, you will go on the round of rebirths. When you are on the round of rebirths, uh, you go up and down sometimes to a happy destination, sometimes to a woeful destination of rebirth. So. Definitely, uh, you will be born in the three woeful destinations again and again, which is really painful, uh, full of suffering. Uh. So, our in right view is more important. Uh. In the Anguttara Nikaya 9.20, in the Sutta, the, the Buddha said a long time ago he was born as a Brahmin, and in that lifetime he did a lot of... Uh, dana, offerings and charity. And the Buddha said, in spite of giving to so much to so many people, the merit was not very much, because there was not a single person with right view to receive the offering. In other words, there was not a single Arya, noble person around. All were ordinary worldlings, putujana. So, uh, the implication of the sutta is that once you get right view, uh, you are an Arya. Uh, so it's, it's very important to become an Arya. You must get right view. If you don't have right view, uh, you have not become an Arya. And once you become an Arya, then you will never regress. Uh, you will never be reborn into the any one of the three woeful planes of existence. Uh, that's why it's so important uh, to get right view. Once you get right view, uh, you know uh, you're never going to be reborn in the three woeful planes of existence. Uh, you'll only be reborn in the two happy destinations, uh, either as a human being or as a deva or devi. Uh. And the sutta says, uh, even you are, if you are born as a human being, uh, you will have a lot of blessings. Uh. You will you will come back uh, as a human being uh, with a uh, good life. Uh, they are born to a wealthy family, uh, and you will have good looks, and you will have long life, a healthy, a strong body, etc. So uh, that's why it's so good uh, to get out in right view. Now in the Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 117, uh, the Buddha says, uh, that if you practice Noble Eightfold Path, you must always, always enter by the first factor, right view. If you don't get right view, and you have not entered on the Noble Eightfold Path. So, you can see about 10 years ago, in Malaysia, in Penang, we had one lady who practiced meditation for 20 over years. And was certified by her teacher to have been an Arya already. And then, and she was teaching meditation. And she was a very serious uh, Buddhist. Every day she kept the eight precepts. And whenever the school holidays came, she would shave off her, her hair and become a matchy for the school holidays. And she did this year after year. Then after 22, 20 over years of practice, suddenly she gave up Buddhism and switched her religion. So all that effort, uh, 20 over years of effort, uh, all gone down the drain. Why? Because she did not get right view. Once you get right view uh, and you become a Sotapanna, you have unshakable faith in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. So if you don't get right view, uh, you still don't have the unshakable faith. Uh. Today you say you're a Buddhist, another day you give up the religion, switch your religion. Uh. So, you can see here that right view is more important than meditation. Now, how do we get right view or are in right view? 
In the Majima Nikaya Sutta 43, uh, it is stated uh, that there are only two conditions uh, for you to achieve right view. The first condition is the voice of another. The voice of another is very important. The second one is proper attention or careful attention. You only saw Manasikara. So only somebody else teaching you the Dhamma, uh, that's the only way you can get right view. If you meditate by yourself uh, until doomsday, you're not going to get right view by yourself. That is why when the Buddha came into the world, uh, after he was enlightened, uh, he taught the Dhamma. He taught the Dhamma. And after he taught the Dhamma, people heard the Dhamma and Aryans started to appear in the world. So if the Buddha did not teach the Dhamma, people will meditate and meditate, and then they may get psychic powers. Uh, they may end up like Jesus Christ or some yogi uh, with psychic powers. But uh, they may not become an Arya. So it is the Dhamma that helps us uh, to get right view and become an Arya. So remember the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, you have to enter it through right view. That's the only way. And also in this Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 117, uh, it says uh, that the Noble Eightfold Path, the eight factors, uh, are to be practiced one by one. Right view, uh, once you get right view, that will bring you to the next factor, which is right thoughts. And right thoughts will bring you to right speech, and right speech will bring you to right action, which will bring you to right livelihood, which will bring you to right effort, which will bring you to right recollection. And finally, in right concentration. Now, coming back to this uh, getting right view, listening to the Dhamma, somebody else teaching you the Dhamma. During the Buddha's days, there were no books, so somebody else had to teach you the Dhamma for you to get right view. But nowadays, uh, we have the suttas, the Buddha's words uh, in the Nikayas. So reading the Nikayas or reading the earlier suttas uh, will have the same effect. Uh, so what type of Dhamma should we listen or should we study? Uh, the type of Dhamma that we should concentrate on uh, to, uh, to achieve right view uh, is the earliest discourses of the Buddha, the original discourses of the Buddha. And all schools of Buddhism uh, agree uh, that the Original discourses of the Buddha are found in the earliest four Nikayas, four collections of the Buddha's words. The first one is the Dika Nikaya, long discourses of the Buddha. Then Majjhima Nikaya, medium length discourses of the Buddha. Sangyutta Nikaya, topically group discourses of the Buddha. And Anguttara Nikaya, numerically arranged discourses of the Buddha. So these are the earliest uh, Nikayas. The fifth, we have a fifth Nikaya called the Kudaka Nikaya. Kudaka Nikaya means the minor collection or the small collection. It started off with one or two books, and that's why it's called the small collection. But monks started to add more and more books uh, into this Nikaya, so that now Sri Lanka and Thailand recognized 15 books. But Myanmar in 1956, they added another three books to make it 18 books. And everyone knows that these three books are not the Buddha's words. And yet they felt that it was important enough to put it in. So from here you can see how the minor collection grew to become the major collection. So in this Kudaka Nikaya, only about six books are reliable in that they do not contradict uh, the earliest four Nikayas. Uh, and these six books uh, are the Dhammapada, Sutta Nipata, the Udana, Itivutaka, Theragata, Therigata. I have written a book called Liberation, Relevance of Sutta Vinaya, I think. Uh, uh, the books and the CDs uh, somewhere here uh, you can get. Now, uh, how this listening to the Dhamma is so important uh, that the Buddha calls all his disciples uh, 
Savaka, whether it is monastic disciples or lay disciples, and all the Buddha's disciples are called Savaka. This word Savaka has been translated into Chinese as a senwen, hearers or listeners. So only if you listen to the Buddha's words and you understand, can you be called a disciple of the Buddha? Now, how do you know that you have right view? Uh, the Buddha says uh, that uh, a person has right view, uh, has attained uh, stream entry. When you get right view, uh, you enter the stream, uh, you become the first stage Arya, which is out of the eight types of Arya, the lowest uh, is the first path attainer. That's a stream enterer. This first path attainer uh, is a person uh, who understands some basic Dhamma about the Four Noble Truths. Uh, and as a chief right view, so he attains his first path. Now the Sutta says uh, that after you attain the path, uh, uh, the path comes from understanding. But understanding is not enough. After you understand, uh, you have to study the Dhamma more and meditate. And put the Dhamma into practice. Uh, keep the moral conduct. Uh, listen to more suttas. Meditate, uh, practice uh, charity, and over a period of time, uh, when your understanding deepens, uh, and then this path uh, will ripen and turn to fruit. Uh, so it becomes Sotapanna. The first path, uh, after some time, becomes uh, fruit, Sotapanna. But later, later books, uh, like the Abhidhamma, they say that once you achieve the path, uh, immediately it turns to fruit. This is not what the Sutta says. The Sutta says that when you achieve the path, you have not eliminated the three factors. It takes more understanding, it takes more work. You have to work on it, and then that wisdom ripens, and then it turns to fruit. And when it turns to fruit, the three factors fall away. What are the three factors? One is doubt. Doubt about the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Another factor is uh, Sila Bhatta Paramasa, clinging to rules and rituals. And the third factor is uh, Sakaya Diti, identity view. Uh, we like to identify ourselves uh, with the body and the mind. We think this body and the mind is I or mine. Uh, but when you see impermanence, uh, then you see uh, that this body and the mind cannot be I and mine. This body is like a shell. So, even though you understand uh, that the body and the mind is not the self, uh, but still you have a self. Uh, you have a self somewhere. It's only the Arahan uh, who has finished his work, uh, who has no self. Uh, even all the other stages of Aryahood, uh, they still have the self. Uh, only thing is... All the Aryans uh, have eliminated Sakaya Diti, identity view. You don't identify yourself uh, with the body and your mind, even though you have a self, uh, because you see impermanence uh, in the body and the mind. Uh. What is impermanent uh, cannot be the self. The Buddha always talk about anatta, that there is uh, no atta in the world. Atta, although we translate it as self, uh, you have to be very careful because uh, in the worldly sense, uh, we have a self. We have a self. This is the conventional self. But that is not what the Buddha meant. What the Buddha meant by Atta is something that is permanent, that is unchanging. A core, an essence that remains the same. If there's something that remains the same, uh, then you can identify it, identify it uh, as yourself or something. But if everything is changing all the time, uh, then uh, uh, whatever you say uh, is yourself. Uh, after a while, it changes. It's no more there. How can it be yourself? Yeah. Mm. But this uh, no self, uh, anatta, is very hard to see. Very hard to see because our mind is not developed. So we meditate uh, to develop the mind uh, to a higher level so that we see uh, with a higher wisdom. If you 
most people, uh, we operate through the six senses. Uh. We, we know the world uh, only through the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body and the mind. Uh, that's how we perceive the world. Uh, if you perceive the world only through your six senses, uh, you are not going to be to have a very great wisdom. Uh, you have to transcend the six senses, uh, develop your mind. Uh, then only uh, you have a higher wisdom. So, so uh, this uh, psychiatry, uh, you understand that uh, since the body and the mind is impermanent, uh, you cannot be yourself. Uh, so, a person uh, who has eliminated the three uh, factors, uh, he becomes a sotapanna, uh, and this Sotapanna, he has unshakable faith in the Buddha, his unshakable faith in the Dhamma, his unshakable faith in the Sangha. And he has sometimes said to have the perfect sila. But this perfect sila is not uh, the monks 227 precepts or the Mahayana monks 250 precepts. Or the Bhikkhunis 348 precepts. It is the Aryan precepts. And the Aryan Sila uh, are three factors uh, in the Noble Eightfold Path. The three factors that comprise Sila is right speech, right action, and right livelihood. So after this, after this I'll talk about that. So this. Uh, so the Panna, he has the unshakable faith in the Buddha Dharma and Sangha and he has the Aryan Sila. Now the Buddha also said, now once you become an Arya, you are never reborn in the three woeful pains of existence. And the Buddha also said, now once you become an Sotapanna or a stream enterer, you have a maximum of seven more rebirths before you enter Nibbana. And these seven more rebirths, uh, you only either go up to the heavenly rebirth or human rebirth. Also, once you have a uh, right view, uh, you have seen the Dhamma, you have the Dhamma Chaku. Dhamma Chaku sometimes is translated as vision of the Dhamma, sometimes as the eye of the Dhamma. In other words, you have seen the Dhamma. Once you have seen the Dhamma, you become a changed man. Your attitude towards the world uh, is changed. Previously, you were very worldly. Uh, you like to enjoy everything in the world. Uh, slowly, uh, you become more of a recluse. Uh, keep more to yourself. You practice. Uh, you don't want to go to karaoke. You don't want to go to Genting Highlands. Uh, you don't want to go to the casino. You don't want to go to the races. Uh, you don't go with your friends. Uh, happy hour and all that. Uh, Going to for China girls and all that. <laughs> so people uh, who notice uh, your change and uh, sometimes they think something wrong with this fellow. <laughs> so you know when you walk the spiritual path, uh, it's a lonely path. Nobody wants to join you. You have to walk the path alone. So if you don't have the Courage, you don't have the understanding, it's very difficult to persevere because your friends will want you to join them. Yeah, Yam Singh, go here, go there, but you want to practice the Dhamma more. And also, another characteristic of the Sutapanna, the Buddha says, uh, Sutapanna becomes independent of others in the Buddha's teaching. In other words, you don't look for a holy house who anymore. A lot of people like to look for famous teachers. You know that your real teacher is the Buddha. The Buddha is gone, but his words are with us. The Buddha says, if you see the Dhamma, you see the Buddha. If you see the Buddha, you see the Dhamma. So the Buddha's body is still with us, his words. So, uh, you rely on the Buddha. In Chinese, we say, Pen Se Se Chiamoni Fo, yeah. original teacher is the Buddha. Mm. 